mother uh, mentioned and she told that she went to the hospital uh, to the doctor because she don't know that what is the problem for her child and the doctor gave the child medication for adhd and according to her that medication was not working then after one other month she have taken the child to the other doctor and the child gave the medication for the autism okay that was her second visit and the child was not diagnosed but this in the start they were saying that the child have autism and later on he said that it is asd it's not full fledged autism and now this time when, this, when she went to the doctor and the doctor said to her that we are going to give that medic medica child medication and the child is 7 years old the child medication is the med medication of depression so they are going mm -hmm. to give a 7 year old child the medication of depression so that the child can sleep and child can eat something because according to the mother the old medication was not working and this is a very recent thing i think uh, what country she might have just forget the name of the country but it's a alarming thing because uh, the child needs therapies more than anything else and uh, i don't know why she's not coming toward that aspect i think she have to come for the therapy what do you say this medication I mean, it is totally experimentation of the child who is seven years old and he was saying, what do you want? I said that, uh, when she said that the ch uh, they prescribed the medication for uh, depression, I said the medication was for you or for the child. And she said that the medication was for the child. So that is a large mistake. I think we have seriously need to look into that aspect that why we are giving medication to a seven-year-old child, the medication which are psychotic medication, antipsychotic medication. I don't know who is going to monitor these things. It's a, something bad. I think people don't know. They just want to make everything go away. It's an easy don't... fix. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes yeah. you're right. It is easy for and us. I, I don't know. I don't know about that mom, but me as an autistic, when they tried putting me on medications, I refused because I didn't want the medications in my mom's hands because I wouldn't have gotten it. Medication? I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have, have, been, one, I would have been the one. It <laughs> If I take something, it reacts my body. I cannot even take uh, ibuprofen. It's very difficult to... Yeah, same. And if you take... Uh, because I will have the issue of the sleeping, and I used, they used to give me some kind of tranquilizer. If I take that tranquilizer or medication, my body was not working and my head was totally numb. I was not able to feel my head. So I just refused those, those medications. That was not... At that time, even I was not even... That, that diagnosis phase was not there, but I, I had issues with the sleep for my whole life. And sometimes they used to say it is a stress or whatever they were saying. But later on, I, uh, I get to know that it was my gluten. The gluten was adding into my sleep. The moment I left eating gluten, my sleep came back. And that was after so long. Yeah. You know, and that is a great topic also for responders because what's mm -hmm. happening is like Landon, he doesn't like finishing anything. If you go in our cupboard, we have one donut in there. We have a, a thing of um, Oreo cookies, one leftover, uh, you know, the cereal box, he has one like little scoop in there. He will not finish anything. So one day he did that with his pills. When he was supposed to take his pills and fill his pill box, he did not put the one pill in there. And I knew something was wrong after probably about a week. And I said, what's going on with you? He said, well, I don't know. I think I ran out of medicine. And I said, you think, or you did? He goes, I did. When did you do that? Well, and he gives me the date, which was seven days before he told me. And I'm like, Landon, you can't just take yourself off of there. That's not good. He's on antipsychotic. He's on OCD, all of that stuff. And, and he will spiral, but officers don't know those things. So we have to share with them. If the medicine isn't working, <clears throat> it's probably because ADHD is the first thing that exhibits, but it did not exhibit the autism yet. So when you medicate, it, it may not ever take. Well, not only that, you have not necessarily with Landon, but um, if you replace it, he'll then eat the last <laughs> thing, right? So yes, if, if, if I if, tell him, you go, he, girl. <laughs> he, he, does, he doesn't want to be responsible for having to replace it, probably. Yeah. Mind what? Like, look, if I'm the last person that does that, I'm not going to have any more. So I want it in there so that I know I've got it when I really want it. But there's no more. So I'm not going to take that last one. Think about that. So and I do the same too. thing. Yeah. <laughs> I do the same thing. You remember that one time where I was like, I was out of medication and I had been like three days and 
all I had to do because I do that to myself. So I'll have like, you know, a pill bottle or I'll have all my medications in there. So I have them with me. And all I had to do was open that bottle and pop them in my mouth. But it was the last thing I didn't have anymore. So I just didn't take it. <laughs> yeah, I or, get it. I get it. <laughs> or I think so much about it. And I like hours later, I'm like, oh, yeah, I was in the. Oh, yeah, I never took it. Like, I'll see a glass of water and my pill sitting right next to it. Like three hours later, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Well, it's important because if those things um, trigger, uh, you know, and it becomes a behavioral issue or just a, a, a an SMI issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, then that's when you could see. I put this picture behind me. This is my husband and and my son Landon when he was little. Uh, the the police car was a trigger for him. So one night my husband had forgotten something. This is normal. Um, and he said, hey, could you bring me this? And it was in the middle of the night because he worked third shifts. And so we drove out to him and I said, would you mind letting Landon come in the car with you? I think it would be a great way for him to learn about this, you know, the things that go on in the police car and in your job and stuff. And so he got in, he was very stressed out. And by the time he was done, this is their faces. So it was a very positive. And I think I called it a park along, not a ride along, but a park along. And uh, Landon actually got to learn about the lights and how you turn them on and why do you use the computer and all the different things that needed to happen. And my husband didn't realize he just kind of took it for granted that Landon would already understand those things. And he didn't. I think he was 10 at the time. So uh, thank you for putting that in there, Justin. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I'm going to share with you guys uh, really quickly. This is a short video. I think it's three three minutes, but I'm going to show it to you because I want you um, to see why we did the training the way we did. And then I'm going to show you really quickly the presentation that we created, but I'm only going to show you just what we're going to have the officers do in the classrooms with the kids. And it's all special needs kids. Um, let me see if you guys can hear this. You might not be able to hear it. I think I got to give you voice or sound here. So give me one second. Share sound. Okay, now you should be able to hear. Here we go. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> Hello, assalamu alaikum. Hello, hello everyone. Hello. I'm going to pause it because I want you to understand what happened there. So when Landon was little, he could not open the door in the car by himself. So we had to teach him how to use his motor skills to open the door. 
when he was opening the door, he would get out of the car and he would start walking wherever we were going and he forgot to shut the door. So we told him before you get, or when you get out of the car, you need to shut the door. So when he, the officers are telling him to get out, it was more important for him to shut the door because that's what we've told him and conditioned him to do his whole life more so than leaving that door open, not understanding that that officer probably wants that door open to make sure that there's nobody in the car with a gun or something like that. So he gets out, then, you know, he faces them because like that's, he's having a conversation, eye, eye contact, right? So he's doing that. They tell him to turn around. But when you say turn around, he goes 360 degrees because that's turn around. It's literal thinking. And so we're teaching <clears throat> officers when you use your commands, if you heard, uh, um, Officer King, the black gentleman, he was the one that said, go backwards, go backwards. You know, he was coaching Landon and he would say, OK, now stop. Now you watch Landon's feet. He actually made it like noticeable that he stopped because when he did that, he wanted them to know I'm listening to you. So don't shoot me. Right. Because I'm listening to you. I'm complying with what you're doing. So he's giving them body language. He's signing. So then they tell him, go down on your knees. Now, with somebody that has motor skill issues to go down on his knees, he went right down. He didn't know it was going to hurt him. So that could be another injury that could be caused because of that. So we're teaching them, OK, when you do that, have him go down on one knee and then put the other knee down. Or just if that's not important, then don't have him kneel if he's not a threat to you. <clears throat> these are all the things that officers are they're learning it based on typical society they have never modified uh the academy training for simple step-by-step -step commands and so he goes down on the ground they say put your arms out like an airplane this is an airplane to land in right then they said no put your arms out like an airplane and he goes down like this you know finally but they said put your arms behind you well, when he does horse therapy, this is a, actually a core exercise. So when he says, they tell him in core, you know, core exercises, put your hands behind your back. This is the way they have them doing it. So either we have to go to the therapist or we have to go to the police and say, what do you have to change the way you're commanding this? Because if you don't do that, then you're confusing the person that thinks literal. And, and now he can't, comply. he can't comply. And the officers are thinking that he's being facetious right and and then they put his you know the handcuffs on him which is also a sensory issue when the guy was doing it you could hear the officer he was so stressed out trying to get Landon to do the things that he needed to do and then he should have said I'm gonna put the handcuffs on you I'm gonna lift you up I'm gonna walk you back I'm gonna ask you questions about your name tell him what you're gonna do so he has time to process because when you saw him put your hands and grab your shirt collar and pull it up He's sitting there doing all kinds of things that could have got him in big trouble. And then finally he did, he, he understood what they were saying, but he didn't get it before that. So I'm like, oh my God, I would, I would have assumed as a parent, he was 15. He would have already known all this stuff. But then I'd say, but who would have taught him if it wasn't me? Nobody's going to teach him. We don't have law enforcement classes. We have firefighters in classrooms. So you I don't, you don't do realize what they don't know until it's like right there in your face too. Like, or it might not be something he doesn't know how to do. It just takes him a minute to, from hearing to processing, to act, uh, to executing. Yeah. Yeah. So we had to write a curriculum and we started at kindergarten. And so when I wrote it, I wrote it and it was way too complex. I sent it to the officer. The officer is autistic. His son is autistic. He was like, this is too complex for the age group of the kindergarten to fifth grade. I said, um, thank you. And thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, I was also about to say that. She had to leave. Yeah. Uh, and, Sandasha, you know, where is Dr. Shibafta? She is sitting in a conference, actually. Oh, <laughs> have a hi, conference. Dr. Ravati. Hi. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Assalamu alaikum. As oh, I'm not going to try. <laughs> How are you? She looks, she looks like one of the main characters on Orange is the New Black. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, Con uh, conference, uh, it's, uh, it's on severity of heart attack disease. You're a very, very busy lady. Yeah. No, little. <laughs> yeah, right. All of you guys, you don't sleep. None of you. Oh my gosh. I um, was. Yeah. I this, one is, <laughs> this one is going to be the K through five 
Um, and then the fifth grade will start introducing the more complex one that talks about bullying and domestic violence and, you know, all of those things. But um, K through five at risk. So the officers are in the classroom with the kids to teach sustainability with safety crisis intervention skills. And we're working on motor skills, processing delay, police commands, uh, being shorter, acknowledged the need for practicing motor skills, um, the expectation of a police officer during crisis encounters, and the need for simplifying the commands. Uh, they were telling this group of kids, turn the key off and put the keys on top of the car. And I'm like, there are no keys. Most of the key the cars nowadays have a push yep. button. So the kids are in the car trying to figure out what keys are they talking about. And they wanted to comply because it looks bad if they don't comply. So they took my mailbox keys in the middle council and put them on top of the car just to give the officer what he wanted. So they don't even realize like those commands, if you're a literal thinker, are going to be something that shows these kids may not comply because they don't understand. So we talked about, you know, it's important for the officers right from the beginning yeah. to start building relationships with the kids, right? And once they go in and they show that they're going to be in the classroom, hi, I'm Officer Underwood. I'm going to be in the classroom with you every every uh, month, every week to visit you guys. This is what we're going to be teaching. Then he talks about the simplification of the different um, trainings and he's watching the teacher. How do you interact with these kids when they're having behavior issues? How do you deescalate that? Just He's there just as much to learn as the kids are there to learn. He thought, oh, I just go in there and I'm just building relationships. No, you're learning from them. You're watching the teacher that's going to give you the answers of how to be a better officer because you don't have those answers right now. Yeah, you're just yeah, I, remember, yeah. Yeah, I remember back in my days when I was, I think uh, I was fifth grade or something, I had a police officer coming to the classroom and talk about, you know, of course, the whole thing of dare, to keep, you know, keep kids off drugs. And basically, that yeah, <laughs> message sit with me, basically, like, like smoking, uh, alcohol and all the things basically die that way so it's kind yeah. of more concept there but if we started this in middle uh in elementary justin yeah, and then we went into grade, the drugs and alcohol and yeah, it would have been easier yeah, yeah. agreed so we we tell them go in and say hello my name is and then he asked the kids to say their name why because when Landon was this age he couldn't tell you his name he didn't even know how to say it it's not because he didn't know how to talk he could talk he just didn't want to tell people his name was Landon because a lot of parents say don't talk to strangers don't tell people your name right so all those things that we're teaching at home they they literally do that, even if an officer or a teacher or somebody else is it about put your hands up. So the officer will just stand in the classroom, just like the mirroring that you talked about, Kanasha, he'll say, put your hands in the air, arms straight out, hands up, hands behind your back. But you see the pictures, yeah. hands up. So this is all stuff that when Landon would have done that training at 15, he would have already known how to go two steps forward, two steps back, all those types of things, mm -hmm. turn around. So your back is to me, turn around so your face is to me. And they may not get it the first time, but he's going to do this every other month in the school from kindergarten until fifth grade so that they get practice six months, four months out of the year, and they can continue practicing these things. Clap your hands. I had them do this only because I wanted them to understand stop. And stop means freeze. Don't move, don't run, right? Start teaching them fight or flight. You can't run. You can't do these things because the kid in Buckeye in 2017, he was actually thrown into a tree because he went into fight or flight mode and the officer needed to detain him, ended up on the ground. And then everybody was upset because the officer was leaning on the kid. I said, yeah, actually, that was probably the most comforting for him because he was deep pressure uh, and, that, and, and the stress went away. And the reason I know that is because when you watch the video, the officer had his cell phone on his side. And the thing went ding and the kid goes, time's up. And I go, that's hilarious. And they were like, why are you laughing about that? And they said, because he's in stress, but the guy's leaning on him. So he's actually not stressed out. The officer thinks he's stressed out. He's not. And he had the ability to hear it go ding. And he's probably in therapy. And when therapy time's up, ding mm -hmm. means time's up. And the kid goes, time's up. And I was like, that's hilarious because he's probably, you know, nobody caught that. And I'm like, I catch that. You guys catch that because you've been either through the therapy or we're parents raising these kids. We know that. Yep. Mm -hmm.
So anyway, and then once they learn this, he can add things like tool belt. Why do I have a, a vest on? Why do I have a radio? Why do I have a camera? All of those types of things. And then what we do is we actually sit back down with the officers and we go into a brainstorming session. This would be great mm -hmm. for you, Justin, where we you ask know. them, tell us what you learned. Because they told me the first time they went into the classroom, the nonverbal kid was punching the officer because he wanted his attention and he wasn't paying attention. And I said, what would that be called, Mr. Officer? Assault on a police officer? He's like, yes. And I said, was the kid assaulting you un uh, intentionally? No, he just wanted my attention. Exactly. But if you don't know that, because you don't know he has autism, that will be a, a charge against him. Mm -hmm. So those are the th things that we need to start bringing awareness to. And then we take this same information in this training and we, we film the officer when he's done talking to us. And then we take it to all the city leaders and we take it to the educators and the families. And we say, look at this content that we created because this officer took the time out to go in the classroom and learn and study the needs of special needs individuals. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, because yeah, I know a couple couple years ago, I think it was a, you know, like a new segment out for our am basically about all this as well. And she and the other video of that too as well. <laughs> Justin, do you like this video? Yeah, that's pretty good too. I was stressed out watching it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, I think I think even with the kids that aren't on the spectrum or anything, do the schools here in the area, because when I was in school, we had resource officers that were always on campus. It was like the officer frame. Do they still have that here? Uh, if you watch the one thing that happened in Phoenix over the weekend or the last couple of days, um, they do, those, that school does not have resource officers yet. They had a huge okay. lockdown in okay. all the high schools. Yeah, right here, so no, but, not all of them do. But I remember my peer officer, they would come in and they'd be on the playground and you could interact and everything like that and that kind of stuff. It was really nice to have them because it was like an officer presence. Because if I wouldn't have had that,